Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a click track to your Ableton Live project file computer device. Uh, you have Ableton has a metronome right here, uh, but it can sound kind of jarring to uh, uh, studio musician people and your client. And, uh, you know, in my previous video, I showed how you can change that. But there's also another way that I like to go about things. So here's the metronome by itself. And uh, we don't want that. So what I did is uh, I found a a sound that's a bit of like a rim shot. And uh, it's one that the client doesn't mind. And it's just a way to kind of keep time. So it's kind of like a virtual drummer person guy. So it's this right here. Right? A rim shot or whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to add that as a MIDI file uh, with a sampler and have it pitched uh, an octave up and uh, all that stuff. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to right click and uh, insert MIDI track. I'm going to select uh, one bar just for ease of use. And uh, I'm going to insert MIDI clip here. Double click on that. There she is. I'm going to have it set every beat or whatever. Uh, there you have it. Um, it kind of looks like that. You can see it now. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag in the file that the client enjoys. Drop that in, and uh, it'll automatically be applied to a sampler. I'm going to hit play. I'm going to increase the volume a tad. Right? Uh, and I want that to start, you know, I don't want that negative space there. I want this, the, the sample to start right away. So how a click track works is uh, typically, and this is what seems to be working for me, uh, the first MIDI note should be an octave up. So it signifies the start of the bar. So I'll just uh, move that up here. So what I'm doing, I should explain as I'm selecting the note, holding shift and then pressing up. And that will have it from, you know, bump it up from C3 to C4. If I didn't do that, it would just, do that, but you can do that if you want. But yeah, I'm just going to bump that up to C4, and uh, you'll see now, or, and here now, that I have my little click tracky thing. Right? And it's uh, short and uh, really fast, and it allows you to uh, keep time. And uh, you know, you can easily adjust the volume, mix it in. If they're like, oh, can you make the metronome louder? You could be like, all right, dog, I got you, and you just boost that up. So from there, you make sure your, your uh, loop function is on, and then you can loop that forever and ever and ever, right? Oops, I'll just right-click, set narrow. So yeah, and this will be all throughout your song or whatever. So what uh, we've been doing is when, you know, when there's no like drums or like say if you're like recording vocals over top of something that's already been pre-recorded like drums or whatever the beginning part doesn't have a whole lot of drums in it so it's hard to keep time so in the beginning I'll have the uh, metronome playing and then oops, and then when the uh, the drums and everything happens and you know everything in the track kind of starts up uh, you don't need the metronome anymore and you know, it can switch to like, you know, just live drums and stuff like that. And then when there's a breakdown or whatever and the drums go away, the metronome can uh, pop back in and you don't have to do that manually. It's really useful. And uh, yeah, that's just how I've been doing it. And uh, yeah, this uh, this, click track, this click track is uh, uh, pretty um, useful. And you can even have it set to eight bars, right? So you can have this as a measure of like your track structure and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, hope you learned stuff. Uh, take care and have a good one.